Hello class, welcome to week eight. I will try as much as possible not to do some coughing in this, uh, or too much coughing <laughs> in this um, announcement. Um, so yeah, I'm surviving, I feel a lot better, but man, this mess was like, messed up, eh? <laughs> Terrible. So uh, anyhow, um, I hope you all are doing okay. Um, so yeah, some of my, you know, some of you have uh, had some muscle health issues, whatever. You're communicating with me. That's good. I still have some of you that are turning a lot of late work in and not communicating with me, and we're about ready to have a talk. So, um, if you are getting to the point where you know you're going to be turning late work in all the time, um, it's time for you to start calling me up and communicating that. Okay, so I just want to mention that. So we just got to do those kind of things. Um. And just to say that I am, I'm really happy with um, most of what you guys are, are doing. I ha I've, n I've not been able to grade the exam, any, any exams I think right now, maybe, maybe one or two, but I'm a little behind on grading. I'm going to be just not my normal speed probably. I mean, I don't know. I have to be out of this apartment by next week. And I spent most of this month just sick, and I'm also trying to work my other job, and so and, and I have to get rid of a lot of the stuff. I get rid of a lot of the books and stuff and art to you guys uh, if you were interested, if you were here. But I'm in Portland, so you know. In any case, um, I have to streamline my life because I'm going to start doing some world travel in August. That's a whole other topic, but uh, uh, anyhow, and then I'm going to be doing it online, by the way. So, I'll still be teaching online, just maybe in a lot of different places. <laughs> um, Alright, so, again, I, I think I don't have much to tell uh, a, a lot of you. I, I'm appreciating some, I have a handful of students that reach out to me to discuss uh, a little more about the, the topics. Um, they have questions, some of you have questions. I actually really like that. Even though I'm busy, I really appreciate all of the students that are wanting to engage a little bit more. And, and, and I, I know that many of you might want to do that or just extra busy. Um, but I, what I just, I'm trying to do is encourage any uh, one else out there, any of you other students, that if you have questions or just interests that you want to discuss with me, I, I want to encourage you to do that. I try to be as accessible as possible, even when I'm like, you know, on, on the busy side of things. Um, okay, so just remember that this week is a double up week. So remember, we are a late start class. And sometimes I think that we get, uh, we forget that because I'll have like a normal just kind of module for the week. And then, but then we have week, weeks like this where I, I cram ancient Greece and ancient Rome together. That's a lot going on. Although I, I think you're noticing that I tried to do the, I, I tried to put the double up weeks into topics that actually are easier to follow. So I did, you know, ancient Israel into Judaism. Now I'm doing uh, a, ancient Greece into ancient Rome. And there is a transition there. And um, I, that relationship um, is important. I mean, we end up having what we call the Greco-Roman tradition, you know, so... So this, this is a lot of information, but it still should be help you visualize a lot and get a lot out of, um, of what to, to make of, of um, these histories. And you know, I learned this, we, we learned this in my Western Civ class, but this is really important. For Western civilization in particular, this section really helps explain a lot of the groundwork that um, the Western world is going to be a part of. And, and it was also a part of the Eastern uh, Greco-Roman Empire of Byzantium, but that ends up getting engulfed by uh, Islam and Turks, uh, Turkic groups. And so, uh, anyhow, it's important. Uh, all this information is important, but this is really relevant. And I will post some interesting videos and articles uh, this week kind of dealing with this topic as well. So I think that's all I really have to say. I feel like there was one other thing that I wanted to add. Oh yeah, I just want to make this one last comment. 
because we did a discussion of monotheism, henotheism, and polytheism in the last section on, on Persia. Um, just keep in mind that these are sociological terms created in the West that Islam, Juda Judaism, and Christianity, for example, are very hyper self-conscious about wanting to be considered religions that only worship one God. And that includes Christianity that, that actually believes in the Trinity, which we'll, we'll talk about more when we go over the Christian section, which is going to be coming up. But having said that, these terms, right, henotheism is not used very often. I don't know why the term is not really caught on. I think it's a good term. It's, it's kind of like, and I was telling this to one other student, it's like when people talk about the context, uh, 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 the term homosexuality or heterosexuality, as if there wasn't a thing called bisexuality. If we didn't have a term called bisexuality, then those people who are doing that, what would the category would they be in? Now, by the way, I realize I've just stepped into a controversial topic, but it is a thing, right? You could be a person who agrees or disagrees about what is appropriate uh, uh, human behavior for adults. But you wouldn't disagree that there are different categories. There's the people who want to do and do do certain things differently, right? Um, so categories, sometimes what we have in societies and history is we don't have certain sets of terms and so one thing gets lumped, lumped with another until somebody realizes that even though this is closer to this other thing, if we gave it a separate term, it actually represents better its its own separate thing. You guys feel me on that? Uh, I hope you're, you're feeling me on that. And you know, th th this is not a conspiracy of language. It's not a silly debate. I think what it is is that when it comes to categorizing things, right, and having an understanding of the world, it just helps us be more precise. So just to quickly say, polytheism, you believe and at times worship many gods or respect other gods. Monotheism is the idea there's only one God exists. And henotheism is the idea that other gods exist, but there's only one true God. There is a slight difference there, right? And it's important, and it's, it's of interest. Um, but if you don't have the term henotheism, and someone believes in one true God, but they still don't deny the existence of other gods, would that be better fit in polytheism or monotheism? Probably monotheism. And that's why you have different people talking about Akhenaten of, of uh, Egypt as monotheist and Zoroastrianism as monotheist. Even though once the term henotheism comes in, then that kind of seems to be maybe to some people a better fit. Okay, that's a little academic discussion, but I hope it actually clarifies some, some ideas and thoughts about this. All right, that's it. Sorry I took much of your time. Uh, have a great week, and um, may we all do well and be well.